today I am painting a Dragon Prince of Caldor, I think it's called. Calador? I don't know. A Dragon Prince. Uh, now defunct model in Warhammer Fantasy. Uh, they don't have rules. They have rules in Legends. They don't have true rules. Actually, they might not even have rules in Legends of uh, Age of Sigmar. But anyway, I'm going to use him. I'm going to have proxy him for something else in uh, Age of Sigmar. I'm not sure what exactly yet, but something. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get started, though. I'm going to start with Grey Knight Steel. I'm going to put this all over the armor. And anything else metallic here. And then I'm going to cover this after I paint this metallic color on. I'm going to cover this in a contrast paint. So we'll end up with a nice... I'm going to use um, a Kellyan green, it's called. Sort of a... Sort of a turquoise -y kind of color. Um, so we'll end up with a metallic version of that. That uh, I'm going to either be proxying this guy as a... Well, most immediately I'm going to be proxying him as a... Um, I've forgotten what they're called. They used to be called Cold One Riders. Uh, Drake Spawn Cavalry for uh, my Cities of Sigmar army. And so my Cities of Sigmar army colors are... This is the the scale pattern that they're going to have. What a terrible green choice. I'm so sorry, Dylan. Um, this is the scale pattern that the rest of my army has. And then combined with that is the purple. This kind of purple. He has a little, tiny little bit, but not a lot. So that... That's the color combination, this purple and these two blues. And so this green is sort of similar to the darker version, or the darker one of these blues. So that'll be the tie-in to that army. <laughs> oh, I'm sure Dylan's thinking what you're thinking. Since you haven't been here in the past couple streams, Dylan... Um, Ryan has taken up the, the mantle of suggesting seafoam green. Since, uh, as I mentioned on stream last time, you chose your day job over watching my stream, which is still quite ridiculous if you ask me, but nevertheless, here we are. And so because we're getting the, uh, because we're putting the contrast over this, um, normally metallic paint doesn't cover amazingly over white. Um, it will cover, but it's much lighter than the true color of the paint. But since we're putting the metallic over it, or rather the contrast over it anyway, we don't have to worry about that. So I'm just going to do one quick coat. And then I'm going to block in some other colors so that we let this metallic dry before we put the contrast on it. And then um, we'll put the contrast on. We'll edge highlight the armor because this is also serving as my entry for day 15 of our advent calendar paint challenge. And that is edge highlight your miniature. So this armor this guy's wearing is very edge highlightable. I did. I did put it on my Warcry monster. It's absolutely true. I used it as the the color on the boils on his back. Maybe not the most auspicious use of the color, but it was used. That's what's important. So I am doing uh, the chain mail and the, the armor in this silver. Um, I think I'm just going to do the armor in the green color and I'll leave the chain mail 
silver, but I'm not 100% sure on that yet. Can you start streaming on Netflix or something? I hate the Facebook app. Um, yeah. The Facebook app is definitely not great. Um, eventually I'll be streaming directly on YouTube. But, uh, unfortunately the requirements for mobile streaming on YouTube are a thousand followers. And I do not have even close to a thousand followers, so. Once I get there... Then I'll be streaming on YouTube. Until then, stuck with Facebook. I could go to Twitch. Uh, I'm not a fan of how Twitch does their VODs, though. And I've heard that saving locally, if you're streaming mobile on Twitch, can be a pain. And I honestly don't even know if there are requirements for streaming on mobile on Twitch. Uh, I haven't looked into it because I don't like some of their other systems. But I'll see, uh, I'll contact Netflix and see what I can get done there. I'd watch this on Netflix. Well, thanks. I think what I'm actually going to do here, unrelated to streaming on Netflix, is I'm actually just going to coat almost everything in this color. So I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. And then I'm going to put this contrast on. And then I'm going to go back and detail other things with, uh, with non-contrast paints. That'll make this step go a lot faster. And it'll make the next step go a lot faster. I think the only thing I will try to avoid is the horse skin. Because that'll go really fast with a contrast paint. And I hate painting horses. Doesn't have to be Netflix either. I'd take a little voodoo, Zumu, Crackle, iHeartRadio. I sure hope you'd watch it on Netflix. You're watching it on Netflix. <laughs> no, nah, it would be hilarious. Although, you know, maybe some people may not have a Netflix subscription. So they're not going to pay just to watch this. So certainly not $18 a month, let me tell you. And if you are willing to pay $18 a month to watch this, please let me know. I will send you my PayPal information. This is a service I am <laughs> even calling it a service maybe. It's a little egotistical of me. This is a stream I am happy to do for free. But if, if someone is and ends up willing to be paying $18 a month to watch this, I'm definitely going to charge Dylan. I think that might be his face right there that I just painted over in this silver. But I might paint it as a piece of metal that's covering his face. We'll see. I'm going to buy you subscribers for Christmas. <laughs> Name one person you consider a friend with no Netflix. WTF, why am I being charged? He's wearing an iron mask. Yeah, he could be wearing an iron mask. I mean, if someone else is willing to pay, Dylan, it just makes sense that you'd pay. Um, I'm sure I know at least somebody who doesn't have a Netflix account. 
absolutely sure. I, I honestly don't know my friend's Netflix habits, so I can't say for certain that I do, but I'm guessing I know at least one person who doesn't have a Netflix subscription. And I bet I know at least one person canceling Netflix. Because going up to $18 an hour next year, I mean, $18 an hour is not nothing. I mean, an hour? Wow. $18 an hour. That would be something. $18 a month. Jesus. I don't know how many times I said $18 an hour, but... $18 a month. Just doing these little details back here in this silver... Alrighty. Now I'm just going to find any places that the metal has streaked a little bit. Because those will come through on the... With the contrast paint. There we go. Alright. So there's our silver done. We're going to let this dry. While we do the horse color. And for this, I think I'm going to do... So, in my, in the rest of my army, the, um, the, like, as I saw, showed you on this guy earlier, the leather that comes off of their rider, or of their dragon dinosaur things, is this snake bite leather color, so I'm going to use that for the horse color. Just so if I need to proxy these guys as them, they look similar. I can't absolutely name someone, but here's no name. Hi, I'm Gregory. Wow. If it were $18 an hour, I can guarantee you that no one would be going with this. Yes, I agree. 100%. Here you go, Dylan. Someone who doesn't have a Netflix subscription. Your girlfriend. She uses yours. Any other questions? Perfect. Da Vinci Code is an excellent pairing for Straight from the Pot. Uh, does she pay for a subscription? No, she does not. Oh, she would have one. Hi, here's a person who would have a subscription if other conditions weren't being met. Hi, I'm Dylan. Yeah. I see how it works. Sounds like you're changing the rules of this discussion here. Besides, if Netflix took this show, everyone would be disgusted with the lack of Seafoam Green. And then there would be a mask Netflix cancel and they would go under all because of you. Wow.
I chose this model tonight because he's so spiky. So he'll be easy to edge highlight, but the spikiness is also leading to difficulty applying the brush to the model. Alright, I think that is all of the horse that is showing. There might technically be some horse in that helmet there, but I'm not worried about it. I'm not sure that our silver is quite dry yet, so I'm just going to do a couple more things before we do the contrast onto the metal. I'm going to do Gore Grunt, or no, this is not Gore Grunt, this is Cygore Brown. I need some Cygore Brown on, uh, on the Lance. That's the word. Lance does have some metal trim on it, but we'll come back and do that later. I'm doing the metal. The metal trim on the rest of the army is gold, so we'll come back and do that in gold. Just checking for any other part of him that would be this color, and I don't see any. So now, I think I'll do the, I'm going to do the blanket down here in uh, Shyish Purple. That's the purple I use on the rest of the army. It's a pretty large flat surface, so I do need to be careful when applying the contrast paint because it will streak very easily. You just want to make sure, you're, if you're doing something like this, you want to make sure your brush is overly saturated, basically, uh, and has more paint on it than you'd think. So that when your brush moves through the paint as you're applying it, it's not a... It's not grabbing paint from the area, it's already saturated. So if you, if you, basically if you try to apply contrast paint on a flat surface and your brush isn't saturated very well, you'll get terrible streaking. I'm seeing if I have any model here that I can show you that on. Yeah, I do. So I'm going to do this properly, and then I'll show you what can happen. I'm just going to get some purple on this down here. There we go. Good enough. No one's going to be looking at the underside of the horse's blanket anyway, so. Alright. So if you grab just a Corsair here. If you uh, get a paint handle also. If you get a uh, flat surface like this, like this guy's boot for instance, and you don't have enough contrast paint on your brush, and you paint it on, uh, 
as your brush gets drier and drier and drier, you'll start to get streaks in your contrast paint. And eventually, when it dries, it won't look very good. So, I'm trying to mess this up as much as possible here. So then if you compare the finish on that to the finish on this purple, you can see that that looks like actual paint coverage, and this is streaky and strange looking. So that's what you want to try to avoid on flat surfaces with contrast paint. And you just solve that by oversaturating your brush. Alrighty, I think our silver is probably dry enough now. So I'm going to get this Akhelian green here. I'll put seafoam green over here just to keep Dylan happy. And I'm going to apply this on top of the metal. We just want to avoid any spots we already have color on. I'm going to try to avoid the chainmail as much as possible, but if I do hit it a little bit, I'll just come back and fix it afterward. Missed some chat here. Fun fact, it takes more than getting hit by a car to stop. You, um, us. <laughs> yup, you're right. Sometimes when I use contrast paint, I, uh, I tap the model in certain areas to fill out corners or small sections. Is that a good idea? Or is there a better idea? Uh, I've never done that personally, but, uh, but I've never, I don't see why that would be a problem. Um, if it works for you. Um, I usually, if anything, I'm guilty of putting too much contrast paint on. So I'll just, if the, a corner isn't filled, I'll just fill the corner with even more paint. Which would increase drying time and could potentially get you into trouble. So if tapping the model slightly to get it all worked into the corners works for you, I'd say do it. It's not like a couple taps are going to like make the paint stop adhering to other sections, so I think you'll be fine. Placate the founder of the Seafoam Green Appreciation Club. Yep, you got it. Might even use it later. We'll see. It does sort of fit this color scheme. Could potentially be a highlight color or something, so we'll see. So I'm just making sure that this contrast paint goes on smoothly. Any, uh, any streaking or anything I see, I'm fixing immediately. Again, by making sure that my brush is overly saturated. I 
I've sort of given up on missing the chainmail with this color. Pretty sure it's going to happen no matter how careful I am, so I'm just going to come back and fix it later. Alright, trying to figure out where all this guy's armor plates are so as to not miss any of them. I'm going to paint his face as a metal plate right now, and we'll see. I'll come back in a bit and see what it looks like. Do a shield here. The other good thing about if you put on your contrast paint a little bit thicker is that it will, as gravity affects it, it will sort of remove some of your streaking sometimes if you don't manage to get it all out. I'm going to do his whole sword apparatus here in this color also. You can always come back later and detail it out in a different color, so... Almost done with this step. I think we've got the front of him to do some more on. And then the horse armor. Or the horse head. And the rest of his helmet, yeah. You could uh, you could speed this process up if you just had a metallic color that was this shade of blue. Um, I don't currently own any metallic colors that are fancy like this. Uh, I mean, I might somewhere in a drawer or something, but this also provides a an opportunity for people to see what colors over metals can do. As it can be a an excellent trick. And doesn't require you to own any strange metallic colors that you may never use again. So this guy's arm here too. Actually I can do the whole shield in this color. And so that makes that easy.
Alrighty, that is that step completed. Just gonna spin him around and make sure I got all the little sections. I don't want a random silver section showing up later. I think I got them all though. This paint's a little too thick right there. Alrighty. Oh, no. Back of these horns right here. Underside of the head there. Alright. Now I think for real this time. We've gotten all that. So now I'm going to go back with my Grey Knight Steel and just clean up the chain mail. Just in the places that the blue got on it. There we go. side and just a tiny bit down here all right so now I'll paint in let's see I'll paint in the cloth here Basically all the cloth that I didn't do in purple. I'm going to do that in Rackarth Flesh. Maybe. Focus. There we go. Close enough. And he's got some cloth here. I'll just be very careful that I don't hit the blue here. Alrighty, there's that. Now I think I'll do, I think I'll do the gold on him. Hmm. No, actually I think I'll start on the, uh, I'm going to do the edge highlights on him now. Why do I have... A 
the heck? I'm just a little confused. I have chat. I have more chat on one screen than I do on the other. Hang on. <laughs> oh, what the heck? I missed so much chat. <laughs> I'm sorry if I didn't respond to your comments. I'm going to look now. My stream died. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I need to... Buckle down and continue with my salamanders. Yes, you do. Uh, handing the seafoam green reins off to Ryan as I must leave to fill my soul with the calling of seafoam green. Good luck. Thank you. I shall serve with honor. Excellent. I really need to Cities of Sigmar to up their dwarf game. Yeah. Uh, the Cities of Sigmar do have dwarves in them. They're not the greatest, though. Not the greatest. I don't know why I had chats in two places. Sorry about that. <laughs> now I appear to be caught up. So I'm going to go ahead and start edge highlighting here. And for that, I'm going to use Baharoth Blue. And I'm just going to come in and pick out the edges with the side of my brush. So I'll go right here. And as usual, when I edge highlight, I'm not going to edge highlight every edge. I'm just going to pick out the major ones. This horn's getting in the way. All right, that's that side of the horse. Do the other side. the heck all these spikes on this guy are catching my brush in odd spots there we go alright then I'll do his shield here just being careful to only get paint on the, the actual edge here these are tricky ones they're not as raised as I would like them to be. Alrighty, we're almost done with the edge highlights, to be honest. Again, we're not doing every single edge, just the major ones. I think that looks good. 
We've got to do this side of the horse helmet here. All right, that'll do. So now I'm going to get some, let's see, I'm going to get some wild wood. If I can find it. I just had it a second ago. Here it is. I'm going to get some wild wood. I'm going to put this on the horse hair as well as the hooves. And I'm also going to do these leather bits here in it. This does go against the rule that I like to set for myself of different materials not being the same color. But because the horse hooves have already been colored with the snake bite leather, it will appear different. Whereas these, since they're still white, will be a slightly different color. I actually might just leave the hooves how they are and uh, just do the hair. That should be enough variation. But as you can see on the hair, this the more orange of the snake bite is still showing through, and so there's enough of a difference, I think. There we go. I think I'm actually going to go back and do this banner on his lance in purple. go and then I'm gonna use some iron breaker no I think actually I'll use iron warriors for the actual blade of his lance here And then I'm going to come in and just do a couple things in this silver. So the, the details on his sword are going to be this color. This part on his, on the reins are going to be a different silver, not be a, I don't want them the same color as the chain mail. All right, and we've just got two colors left, I believe. I'm gonna use Gorthor Brown, first of all, for the leather on him. He doesn't have a lot of leather, but there's a little bit. Got the stirrups right here. Oh, I lied. Three colors left. Three colors left. And I'll get the other stirrup.
and then the wrapping on his sword. There we go. And I think that's it. Actually, I'll highlight uh, highlight this down here with this color. All right, and then our second to last color here is going to be Necro Gold from Scale. No, I lied. Perido Alchemy. Right? Is that what I used? Just trying to see. It's trying to get the same color. Yeah. Perido. Alchemy from Scale 75 will be the gold I'm going to use. Get my palette here. And this is just going to be all the trim on this guy. So, going to be the the, I guess, the banding of the, the chain mail here. All the details on his lance. This is a very pale gold so that it doesn't distract from the blue too much. I want the blue to be the main event of this model so I'm not going to use a super vibrant gold that's going to draw the eye too much. A little sloppier than normal, but that's all right. I must say, if I had a few ranks of these bad boys racing down onto the vampire ranks, I might win a few more fights. <laughs> uh, should be on camera here. There we go. Just going to do the trim on his shield in this color. Not gonna be able to put a base on him today, at least not on stream. The fam and I are going to see a drive through Christmas light show. So as soon as I finish this gold, I'm gonna call it a day. But I will put a base on him tomorrow off stream or maybe later tonight, we'll see. And then post pictures. Looking for other spots that can be gold. I'm going to do these parts around the horse's eye here. And I'll do the horns in gold. Alright, what else can be gold? Oh, this thing on his chest right here. Do that in gold. And then I'll do this in gold. I 
was just about to say, you better share pics or it didn't happen. You're absolutely right. You are absolutely right. All right, so he's got a couple little filigree things. Not filigree, like little rivets or something. Just going to do them in gold. Do these gems in gold real quick. He's got some more. Yep, he has some more down here. there alrighty oh, it's got some more here and here some on his sword he's got some horns on his sword I'll do those in gold real quick alrighty I think actually I have the color handy. I'm going to do his face real quick. Kislev Flesh. Just going to put a little bit on his face. I think the metal face looks a little... It looks like a mistake. It doesn't look purposeful. Need a smaller brush. Looks like I just got lazy and left the face that color. It doesn't look like a mask, so... I'm going to paint it in a flesh color. A little sloppy, but that's okay. Fix that up with another edge highlight of this Baharoth blue. These horns on the head of the horse make it difficult to maneuver the brush in here, but I'll manage. There we go. All right. So then, the last thing I'm going to do is take some null oil good old null oil just, uh no elf in the iron mask just paint in a different shade of metal yeah you're right i absolutely could have painted it in a different shade of metal um the thing for me was that because i think on the miniature it is his face not a mask it's indented to the helmet too much to be another piece of material um and so in this case i just did that but, so now I'm going to take this null oil and basically just put it on the whole miniature everywhere that is not contrasted. So that'll be the metal. And the pale cloth here. As well as the little bits of leather in a couple places. Like right here. here on the sword there we go make sure to get it on this chain mail on the horse in here and on the other side there we go and I'm going to do it on the lance here where the metal and the wood come together and then on this part of the lance and the tip of the lance I'm just going to make sure it's not pooling too much, like right here. I'm just going to soak that back up before it dries. And then I'll just do a little bit on his face, just to pull out the details. I'm not going to paint 
eyeballs or anything on him. And then I'll do it on the eyes of the horse in this area here. Oh, I didn't do the gold on this side. Well, that's okay. Now I've been putting old oil on it, so I can't paint right on it just yet. But when I come back to do the base, I'll fix that up. And we'll be fine. All right, so I think that'll be it. It's uh, just about 9 o'clock, so it's been an hour. The great Null Noil, my true love. I'm sorry, Seafoam Green. <laughs> I'm sure Seafoam Green will understand. But yeah, that'll be it for this episode. Um, I think the, the contrast paint over metallic came out really nice. It's a great thing to have in your arsenal, your tool bag of paints. It, uh... It can make for some excellent color choices. And this will match the rest of my army, so that was what was important. But yeah, so uh, that'll do it for this episode. I'll be back on Wednesday painting something. Not Warhammer related, I'm not sure what yet. But uh, thank you everybody for watching, and I will see you next time.